Wall filter has two types of settings. You're going to have a low pass filter and a high pass filter. The low pass filter, its job is to eliminate the higher frequencies and will only allow the lower frequencies to pass or be demonstrated on your spectral Doppler. This is essentially decreasing your wall filter. That's why you see this wall thump. Think of it as like a low pass filter is a guard at the beginning of a bridge. In order to pass this bridge to the other side, you have to be a low frequency. Essentially, it only allows the lower frequencies to be demonstrated and it eliminates the higher frequencies. The other type of pass filter is a high pass filter. And what this does is it eliminates the lower frequency Doppler shifts of low or of slow moving red blood cells. So a high pass filter is a guard at the bridge, just like the low pass filter. And if it's the high pass filter this time, it's only gonna allow the higher frequencies to pass or cross the bridge or be demonstrated on your spectral Doppler. And that's why when you have a high pass filter, simply by turning up your wall filter, that you have that dark space at the baseline. So this image here, this shows an image or a spectral Doppler where the wall filters turn too high. Essentially, it's a high pass filter. And this one right here, this image or spectral Doppler represents a low pass filter or a wall filter that's turned down too low. And these are indicated by these wall thump artifacts. You can also call these clutter. On your boards, they could take a picture and ask a question in a bunch of different ways. One way they could ask this question is they'll say, how do you fix this image? So you're going to look for the options that will fix the image. Or they could ask a question that says, what's wrong with this image? So you're going to look for the options not to fix it, but to choose the answer that is causing this image to look like this. So if they ask you, how do you fix this image? You're going to look for options how to fix it, which means you're going to lower your wall filter. If they say, what's wrong with this image? You'll say, the wall filter is turned too high. Another way they could ask this is, they could say, what do you decrease to fix this image? And you're going to look for wall filter, of course. Same thing with here. They'll say, what do you increase to fix this image? And you're going to look for wall filter. Do you see how... In these spectral Doppler waveforms, we have this envelope and then this dark area here. This is called the spectral window. The spectral window should essentially be dark or black. If you start to see echoes in here, that means that this is called spectral broadening. And if you see that, then you're going to decrease your gain. Okay, let's say they showed you this image here and they said, this is another way they can ask a question. They'll say, how do you make image B look like image A. You would increase the wall filter because this right here has that gap, which means it's a high pass filter. How do you make image A look like image B? You would decrease wall filter, making it a low pass filter. Exactly. You would decrease your wall filter to demonstrate the lower frequencies at the baseline. Now, look at these little echoes here below the baseline. What does that remind you of? This is actually not clutter. So don't confuse actual wall thump or clutter with something that's normal. Wall thump or clutter will typically start at the beginning of the upslope of your spectral okay. Doppler waveform. Essentially, the beginning of systole right here. So you'll see it right there. These are occurring at early diastole. It's almost like a triphasic waveform where it goes up and comes down below the baseline briefly, then up to start diastole. How would you make image A look like image B? This is the image that is going to change. This is the image that did change. So I'll briefly look at the one that did not change yet. Then I'll look at the one that was changed. If I look at it closely, look how we got these artifacts at the baseline. What do these remind you of? These artifacts are wall thump or clutter. To make image A look like image B, you would decrease your wall filter. Anytime you see clutter or wall thump and they ask you what's wrong with it, you'll say the wall filter was turned down too low. And if they say, how do you fix it? You'll choose increase wall filter. Now, wall filter is a great way to eliminate ghosting artifacts. But a lot of times, if you're shown a question like this on your SPI, they won't ask you to adjust the wall filter. 
they'll ask you to use something else. But let's just start with wall filter. I'll tell you the other one in a second. So if they showed you this type of image, what artifacts are demonstrated here? This is called clutter, or it's also called ghosting or tissue bleeding. These are essentially lower frequency Doppler shifts because either the patient is moving or anytime the artery pulsates, it causes the tissue in the surrounding area to kind of vibrate and that will cause this ghosting artifact. In order to fix it, you could do one of two things. If it says, how do you fix this image? And you look at your options. First, I would say, look for wall filter. And if, it, if you don't have an option that says, to increase wall filter, then you're going to look for the second alternative, which is decrease your color gain. So just like how when your wall filter is turned down too low here, you're going to have these lower frequencies here, right? This sonographer was probably evaluating an artery, which means at the beginning of systole, it's going to vibrate the tissue a little bit. And that's why you get these uh, wall thumps here. So that's the same for spectral Doppler as well as color Doppler, it's the same thing. And that's why if you were using wall filter, you would increase your wall filter to fix that. When you're taking your SPI boards, you're really at their mercy of what they kind of consider as the correct answer. Doesn't mean that it's the right way to adjust your image. For example, let's say they say, how do you fix this image? And your options are decrease wall filter, B, increase color gain, C, increase PRF, D was decrease scale. Let's say you're presented with this type of question on your boards. Which would you choose to fix this image? You would increase your PRF. In the real world, you wouldn't reach for the PRF first. That would be the third or fourth option. But for this question, this is the most okay. correct answer. So either you know, even though the answer is not something that you would choose to adjust in the real world, uh, it's still the best answer for this question. And that's key for any question that you are presented with. So which is the best answer? Sometimes you'll have two good answers, but which is the best of the two? Now, in reality, let's say that they said, how do you fix this image? And option A was increase color gain. B, increase wall filter. C, decrease PRF. D, decrease scale. Now, how would you answer this question? Increase wall filter. Yes. What I do is, I will think to myself when I read each one, I'll think, what will that do to my image? One by one. I'll look at A, increase color gain. Well, no, we already have a lot of color gain, so I wouldn't do that. Increase wall filter, most likely, because that will eliminate uh, these lower frequencies. Decrease PRF, no, that make it worse. Decrease scale, no, these are, these are both adjusted at the same time. I know I've said in my videos before that wall filter is adjusted when you adjust these two. For the SPI, like I said, in the real world, that's correct. But for the SPI, you have to kind of play by their game. For this image, you would increase wall filter. Let's say they said, how do you fix this image? And the options are, decrease wall filter, B, decrease PRF, C, decrease color gain, or D, decrease scale. What would be the best option for this question? Decrease okay. color gain. Yes, you would decrease your color gain, because that would eliminate a lot of this clutter artifacts here. What if I did this, shake things up? How would you fix this image? Would you increase wall filter? B, decrease color gain? C, decrease PRF? Or D, decrease scale? Actually, the best option for this question is B. I would reach for this first before you start messing with your wall filter. So like I said, you're at the mercy of the SPI. I feel like sometimes you'll have two good answers that could be correct, but you have to kind of like decide 
which one is the most correct. So it's really not fair, but really they don't care if it's fair or not. How do you fix this image? A. Decrease color gain. B. Decrease PRF. C. Increase scale. Or D. Increase wall filter. This image here shows two vessels. One's an artery, one's a vein. And then right in the artery, you can see that there's some aliasing going on. And that's... Oh, they could also say this. Steer color box. Now what's your answer? Still increase scale. <laughs> yeah, you would okay. increase scale. The, the box is steered correctly because we're looking at the vessels in a short axis or a axial view. And really, Correct. sometimes you don't have to steer it one way or the other. Good. So what about, let's say we had this one. How do you fix this image? Do you A, increase PRF, increase scale, C, increase color gain, D, steer color box? Increase color gain. You would increase color gain because what's wrong with this image? Number two represents a vein that's void of color. This is the artery. and if you were to increase your scalar PRF, it would just take away color from the artery. You want to do that. Right. And, and steering the box still doesn't have matter. Everyone. Yeah. So increasing color gain is the best option. What would you do with this image here? How would you fix this image? Increase scale. Nice. Yes, you would increase scale. That's your best option. 